Welcome back. I uh, wanted to share something that's been on my heart for the past, uh, I don't know, like a couple weeks and then my friends came to town so I've been a week with them so I haven't, uh, yeah, I haven't had a chance to upload what's been on my heart but what's been going on is uh, just trying to receive and understand that, uh, you know, we're accepted in the Beloved. Too many times I'm trying to worship God and seek God and have intimacy with God and lay down my life and live for God and I got a whole planet to save and I have so much on my heart and my mind and I don't know how to, you know, reconcile everything that God's told me to do. And sometimes it feels kind of overwhelming because I start trying to do instead of, you know, rest in His power and His ability. So... One of the things that he really helped me understand as I was spending time with him and we were just worshiping with my wife and just had some nice uh, instrumental music going and we were just praying and talking to the Lord and worshiping and I was like, God, I'm trying to worship you, but I see you. I'm like, right now I'm sitting on my front porch uh, on the couch enjoying uh, the beautiful sunset and as we were, uh, you know, anyway, as I was worshiping with my wife, I'm praying and I'm pretty much trying to connect with God and it seems to be challenging and I'm like what's going on why is it so weird and hard and how come I'm striving so hard to enter in and become one and believe his word and so I'll just kind of my own inner battle as I guess as I'm trying to worship and something that he said to me that I really enjoyed uh, the image that I had was you know, me on his front porch, just like I am now sitting on my front porch, trying to worship God, trying to connect with God, trying to uh, tell him what's on my heart. And uh, and as I'm sitting there on the front porch telling God, I love you, I'm here to worship you and all that stuff to him, it was like, dude, come on in. You know, he's inside the house and I'm outside on the front porch trying to tell him how much I love him, how much I worship him and what he means to me and to him it was kind of like what are you doing you know me we're friends come on in we already have intimacy you, you already know me you've been walking with me for so long do you not know me why are you starting back at square one as though you don't so he was inviting me in and saying hey come sit at the front porch come on in have a seat sit down with me you know and and then I just walked in instead of just sitting there I walked in and I sat in like a chair with him and he's sitting there and I'm sitting right next to him and we're not even talking and he's like just let this soak in just let it soak just know that you're loved just know you're accepted and I feel like well God I have a hundred reasons why I shouldn't be here you know I haven't done enough for you I haven't accomplished all the things you've asked of me, I haven't achieved uh, success and glory and miracles and raising the dead and all these things that you've asked me. I haven't got there yet. I, I still feel like I need to do something and he just wants me to know that I'm loved and accepted where I can just sit and receive that. Now I know this, hypothetically, spiritually speaking, we, we know we're loved, we know we're seated with Christ. But every time we come to him, we come with the striving and the stress and this fear. So every time I just kept hearing him for months already, like, just rest. And it's like, man, everyone's striving to enter into this rest. Everyone's striving from the works of the law to a place of rest where everything flows naturally and everything gets fulfilled without even trying. So I was really enjoying resting and I've been resting more and more. And rest doesn't mean you're fruitless or you're not working or you're not taking care of your family or you're not, you know, t doing a job or, you know, exercising and eating and doing all the things that you do in life. We're not saying that. We're, we're trying to get at is the rest is to believe that we're loved, to believe that we're accepted in him. And here's a verse for you that uh, that might bless you. So. It's in Ephesians chapter 1. Paul has his little prayer here that he 
you know, starts sharing some things. And, and it, let's go to Ephesians 1, uh, 3. Okay. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise and glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded to us in all wisdom and prudence having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure which he has purposed in himself. He just kept speaking to me and telling me that you are accepted in the beloved. That's something that, I guess that the reality needs to sink in, that he doesn't just love us, I mean, he accepts us. He, he says, you're mine, you're my son, and you're accepted in the beloved. Just rest in this, rest in this knowledge, rest in this understanding. And then I just sat there with him. I walk in, I sit down with him, and I sit there, and man, just knowing I'm accepted, and I said, man, but I feel ashamed sometimes that I haven't done enough, and I mess up, and I have flaws and, and weaknesses and things that I say or do that might not always be perfect, and I haven't, I've messed up probably more times than I can count, and and you feel like you're not worthy to sit down. And he says, hey, I don't see that. I don't see you like that. I see you as accepted in the beloved. So come on in and sit down. And we have friends who love us and, and people who understand our hearts. And, and when people talk to us who love us, they, they still accept us without any weakness and I mean they see all our flaws and they still love us and it's like it's funny how people can love you and forgive you and you can kind of deal with them but whenever you talk to God you feel like he's mad at you or he doesn't want to accept you or he doesn't love you or and sometimes he just wants us to sit there and just know we're loved sit there and believe his word that we're accepted and he is good he is so good to us and there's so much about his goodness that we might just not understand and if we do understand a little bit it just overwhelms our heart because he is so good to us and he loves you just the way you are right now he won't love you anymore when you become better he loves you just the way you are right now he loves you because he loves you because he loves you because that is who he is he doesn't have love he is love he wants you to know your love he wants no for you to know that you're accepted and that you're his child. And when you know this, it becomes such a strength and it starts taking over other areas. And then when you know you're accepted, you're not striving, you're not fighting to earn his love and approval, you know you have it. You're his child. You start believing his word and the simplicity boils down to believe his word. If his word says it, that's enough. I believe what he says about me and that's enough. That's so beautiful to me, where we're boiling it down to, hey, he said it, I'm just going to believe it. What if you read Ephesians for the first time and you just believed every word you read? It would have changed your life. We're becoming believers where we're not talking about, I'm a son, I'm a son, I'm a son. You don't have to prove to me you're a son. Don't talk to me and tell me you're a son. Live like a son. Live and know you're accepted. Live and have no fear knowing who your father is. That's what proves that we're sons, not the way we speak all the time, because we don't have to prove it to anyone. We live a life that everybody wants to see. So, anyways, guys, I'll just leave you with that one. It's just, you're loved, you're accepted, you have a good father who loves you with all, just who he is, with all his heart. And he just wants you to know that, so you can just sit in his presence, hear his heart, hear his voice. You don't have to worry about all these things because 
if you do nothing with the rest of your life, he still loves you and accepts you just as much as he possibly can right this moment. Because you chose him. His love, his forgiveness is all there. All the things that you think is going to keep you out of his presence. Well, I feel like I have too much sin. Well, repent. Change your heart. Change your mind. Say, God, I need help. I want to turn from this lifestyle. And then when you turn, that's what repentance is. You walk away from that lifestyle. And I even had a dream today where my wife was kind of representing God in a sense, where, or the Holy Spirit, where she was like, I love you no matter what. But I have problems and weaknesses and struggles and difficulties and I mess up and I get frustrated and I might not say all the right things or do the right things. She's like, I know that, but I still love you and we'll get through this. And I was like, wow, so painful, so embarrassing, so hurtful, yet she still loves me. And I know it's a dream, but it's reality to me too because that's who she is. She is love. She's just like her heavenly father. And that's how he is towards us. Where he's revealing to us, hey, I see, I know everything, and I still love you just the way you are right now. He doesn't want us to stay in a place of weakness and struggle. That's why he sent his son to change us and give us a new life, a new nature, a new heart. So that's the beauty of surrender. I just love listening to our surrender songs because we're surrendering into his arms, surrendering into his will. We're no longer fighting and striving and wrestling to prove something. We just surrender and we let his life live through us. And man, that's amazing. Everything starts working out because it's his life and his power that brings the glory, that brings the restoration of all things. So slow down, relax, know you're accepted, know you're loved, know that he's not ashamed, he's not condemning you and he's not beating you up. And just receive the fellowship that you have with him throughout your day. Talk to him, invite him in to do things, and just live free with the heart, with no pressure, with no expectations, with no callings or ministry or anything pushing on you. Just receive his love, and you'll understand that's where the freedom really lies. Knowing you're loved and believe in his word. So God bless you. We'll see you again. Hope this helps. Enjoy this week. Enjoy this life. Enjoy him because he sure enjoys you. We'll see you again.